During this tutorial, we're going to look at how to bake vertex color information from a texture map in 3D Studio Max to be used in the Unreal Engine 4. Let's go ahead and create a sphere model in our 3D viewport. Now one thing to keep in mind is, the resolution of the vertex color information baked onto the model is dependent upon how many vertices are on the actual model itself. Therefore, lower numbers will actually be lower resolution. Higher numbers of vertices will be higher resolution. Here I'm going to add a turbo smooth to this model. And I'm going to set the turbo smooth iterations to 4. Now instead of normally dividing the model like we are here, you would do this in the engine using GPU tessellation. However, for the sake of the tutorial, we're going to make this extremely high resolution to see what the outcome will look like. We'll now convert this to an editable poly. And what we're going to do is take a look at the channels information. So let's go to tools, and in here let's choose channel info. This now displays the different channel information for the selected model. I'm going to take the first map channel here and rename it. We're going to call this extract. Now right above this, you can see that we have our vertex color information channel. And currently there is no information here. This will change a little bit later on when we bake information from a map. We can go ahead and close this for now. The next thing that I want to do is open up my materials map browser. With the first map slot selected, I'm going to choose Get Material. We'll choose just a noise material. We'll go ahead and close this. And what I'm going to do is go down to the actual colors where we have color 1 and color 2, and I'm going to change the color 2 to red. Below that, I'm going to enable the color map, and I want to give this just a bit more contrast. The first thing I'm going to do is select my lower left point. I'm going to right click and convert this to a Bezier corner. I'm also going to add a point on the upper right hand side. Last but not least, I actually want to change the source from object XYZ to explicit map channel. And we want the map channel to be set to 1. Now automatically, this makes it look like the map disappears. This is just due to the fact that the scaling is different with the map channel compared to the object XYZ. In our size, let's change this to 0.1. I'm going to rename this to red channel. In the material next to it, in the empty diffuse map slot, I want to choose RGB multiply. For color 1, I want to choose vertex color. In here, I'm going to change the map channel to 1 and the sub channel to red. We'll now click and drag a copy of the red channel down to the color 2 slot, and we'll choose instance and click OK. I'll now go into the red channel and make this displayable in the viewport. We've now set up our maps and what we're going to do is we're going to bake this noise map information into the actual vertex colors. Let's now apply our secondary material to our object and we'll rename this material Vertex Bake. We'll close this for now, and what I want to do is go to my Utilities panel. In here, if you click on More, you can add Assign Vertex Colors, which I've already done here. In here, I want to make sure that I'm set to Map Channel and have it set to 1. You'll also notice that the name Extract shows up. If we were to choose a separate channel, such as 2, you would see that it's not specified. Let's go back to 1 and make sure that we have diffuse only, color by vertex, mapping checked on, and no radiosity. We'll simply now choose assign to selected. This may take a minute, so be patient. 
When the bake is completed, you'll notice that if we deselect the object, it has a weird pattern on it. Let's open up the Materials Editor, and we'll simply click and drag a new material onto the object. Let's now select our sphere, go to the Modify panel, and in here, I want to choose Vertex Color Display Unshaded. If we now deselect the object, we'll see that the vertex information has been successfully baked from our map. Let's choose the object again, and now we're going to open up our channel info. Even though we baked the vertex color information into the model, you'll notice that the channel is still empty. This is because we need to change the map channel to vertex color. The moment that we do this and we update our channel information, you'll now see that the vertex color has been successfully moved to the vertex color channel. Let's close down our channel info, convert this to an editable poly, and export this into the game engine. We'll simply choose Start, Export, Export Selected. Using the standard FBX settings is fine for our situation. Here, I've imported the mesh. Now as a quick side note, if you ever want to make changes to your vertex color information, you can't simply right click on the object and choose re-import. What you need to do is right click and import the model again into the engine, and under the advanced drop down menu, you need to choose re-import vertex colors. One of the ways that we can check to make sure that the vertex color information was successfully brought over is to simply apply a material to the object with vertex colors run through the emissive channel. Let's right click and create a new material. We'll call this Matte V Test. In here, I'm simply going to create a vertex color. And since we baked out the red channel, I'm going to drag the red channel to the emissive color. If we open up our mesh, in here I'm going to choose that material. You'll notice that the vertex color emission is correct and we've successfully imported a baked map from 3ds Max into the Unreal Engine. You can then use these types of maps and vertex color information to modify vertex animation. For instance, here I've created a disruption shader. The shader is fully built on math with no texture information whatsoever. I'm simply driving it off of the red channel of the vertex color and creating a vertex animation in the world position offset. Let's take a look at this in the game. 